Okay, so today we're going to be talking about dyslexia and my experience with it, as well as some advice to fellow dyslexics. So this video is gonna be split into two parts. I'm gonna talk about my experience with dyslexia because it is unique. You know, we dyslexics, we're not a monolith. <laughs> Everybody has different varying degrees of dyslexia and different experiences of how dyslexia looks for them. So I'm gonna be talking about my experience with it, um, as well as in the second half of the video, I'm gonna be talking about some advice that I have for fellow dyslexics if you're interested. If you don't care about my experience and you just wanna hop over to advice, timestamps in the description. Uh, this is a video that I get requested a lot, so I don't know, hopefully it'll be worth it. So some days it barely affects me. Some days I read fine for me. I don't know what it's like to read not as a dyslexia, but for me, some days I read just fine. Some days I'll sit down and I can't interpret a thing on the page and that's just what my day is. I'm just not gonna read well that day. Um, so I switch to audiobooks because it's the only way I can consume a book some days. And some days it's something in between. Some days it's quite the struggle, but I can push through and I can still read. And reading is my favorite hobby, so that's what I want to do. I want to enjoy reading. And some days the only way I can enjoy reading is by having it read to me, which sucks because as much as I appreciate audiobooks and do use them regularly, I much prefer physical reading. So the days that I can't, I phys like I'm, I'm basically illiterate, those days are discouraging and frustrating. <laughs> but I am so thankful for audiobooks for the fact that if I'm loving a story and I wanna continue it and I'm having a really bad dyslexic day, I can switch to the audiobook and I can still enjoy the story. So thankful for different formattings. Another really weird thing that I've experienced in my dyslexia is missing or added words. Story time, this has been way worse <laughs> as a professional, as an adult. I had a business email one time. Uh, this guy was emailing me saying that he wanted to employ me for something and I I agreed. I said, yes, I'll do this, but I won't talk about it on my channel because I want to keep these things separate. And he said, well, he responded and I read it as, yes, we want to employ you for this and we want it on your channel. And I said, no, I'll explain to you why I feel like it would be a conflict in interest. I'm not comfortable with putting it on my channel. I will do this thing that we're talking about doing, but I will not have it on my channel. And it was it was to it was to read a book for their for their um, promotion for it doesn't matter. He responded again, and I interpreted it as I want to hire you for this thing that we're discussing, and I want it on your channel. And I thought, what's wrong with this guy? We're going around and I keep telling you, why do you keep why do you keep pushing for that? I've told you no. And finally, I was ready to just really write back a rude reply. And then I, I stopped myself and I thought, maybe your dyslexia is screwing you again. So I, I put the email away. I continued my day. I went to sleep that night, woke up the next morning, fresh day, fresh dyslexia, and read the email again. In every one of his emails, he has said, I do not want this on your channel. I'm just asking you for promotion for our publishing uh, marketing. It has nothing to do with your channel. And I, every single time re I read that email, the word not disappeared. It was not in my head. I couldn't see it through my eyes. My brain couldn't process it. The word not was gone. It doesn't make sense. It seems like something you make up. But that's part of my dyslexia, is sometimes words are added and sometimes words are taken away that completely changes the text and I don't understand why. Actually, I kind of do understand why, which will get me to the next point. I can't read bold print, that's a lie. I don't effectively read bold print. And after the first miscommunication where I thought that he said he does not, or where I thought he said he did want me to market it on my channel as well, he then put it in bold print, I do bold not want you to. In my brain, this has always been the case for me as a dyslexic, my brain has always 
skipped over bold print, which has been super fun under employment when instructions are written out and the important parts are in bold and, and I skip those parts completely unintentionally and miss the most important instructions. I've always loved that for myself. It's never caused a miscommunication in my life. That's a lie. It's been terrible. And before I was diagnosed with dyslexia, which I had a terrible school system that I went to, big reason why I ended up homeschooling from fifth grade forward. I had a terrible school system. I grew up in a really not great town and I wasn't dyslexic, I wasn't, I wasn't diagnosed with dyslexia until after I graduated high school. So for a huge chunk of my life, I had no idea why my brain was broken and why my favorite thing in the whole wide world, reading, was something that I failed at so frequently. Cannot express to you how demoralizing that is, especially when you just think you're stupid and not, I have one of the most common learning disabilities in the world. I have a theory and I'd love to talk with fellow dyslexics about this in the comments. Do you also deal with the bold print issue? Because it's not that I can't read bold print, it's that my brain just naturally skips over it. And my theory is because of the next thing that I'm gonna talk about and that's the fact that strange fonts or a compilation of colors makes it impossible for me to read. Strange fonts, stuff that isn't just really straightforward print, cursive, I can't read, um, any kind of slanted or cramped writing, I can't read, uh, calligraphy, and anything that's not straightforward, I cannot decipher no matter what. I know some dyslexics can, they just have a harder time with it, I can't. Also, if a sign or something, a meme, whatever, has multiple different fonts in it or multiple colors, can't read it at all. I know some dyslexics can, it's just harder. I can't, incapable. That's why I think I skip over bold print is because my brain has trained itself to understand you're incapable of reading something different and my brain sees bold, says different, and skips over it. Even though I physically can read bold, it just has to be pointed out to me because my brain has trained itself to skip everything different. Is that weird? Yeah, huh? I don't understand it. Some days my dyslexia isn't a massive hindrance and I'll read something and I'll respond to it, usually on the Discord and somebody will respond, Murph, I think that's your dyslexia. You completely read that wrong. And then I'll go back and I'll reread it a couple times. I'll decipher the text and I'll say, wow, I thought there was a knot there. There's not a knot there. Sorry, I have no, I." Sorry. And sometimes somebody will say, Murph, I think you, your dyslexic got you, your dyslexia got you again. I'll go back and I'll reread it 10 times. I have no idea what was said. It always reads the same every time. And I'll just have to say, sorry guys, I have no idea what's happening in this conversation. It's not my favorite thing. I don't like this, but it's a reality of my life. Last thing I'll point out that is just horrible for me as a dyslexic is reading out loud. And I think that this one is pretty common for dyslexics. It's for whatever reason, a million times harder to read out loud than it is to read in my head. I've never been good at reading out loud. Enter me entering the narration career. I, for a very short time, was an audiobook narrator and I loved it. It's such a fun job. I enjoyed it so much. I no longer do it for two reasons. One reason is just because I was too busy. I have my channel that I manage. I do critique work for authors. I was narrating audiobooks and we're in the middle of an adoption, which is ridiculously time consuming to do all the paperwork and sort through all the things that they need you to do. All of these things, plus also trying to be a good wife and mother, it, it, it can't be done. I was way overloaded. So I had to drop something. And even though I loved narrating audiobooks, it was what I dropped. The reason is because of my dyslexia. As much as I love narrating audiobooks, it took me so much longer to narrate than it takes the average narrator because reading out loud is ridiculously hard and I made so many mistakes. Actually, for a period of time, Corey was, was editing my audiobooks for me and then my friend took it over because Corey hated it. <laughs> but he used to listen to me go around and around in circles. I'd read a sentence and I'd say, in the sound bo booth, I'd be talking to myself saying, that doesn't make any sense. And I'd read it again. That still doesn't make any sense. And I'd read it again and again and again. And finally, I would just say, that's what the text says. That's what it says. And then I'd just move along frustrated because this author isn't making sense. 
And then Corey would come to me later and say, you gotta retake that line. It, it's not even kind of what that said. And there were so many times that I had to retake lines because I would jumble the words and not be able to decipher them that it just took me a lot longer to narrate. And I still came out with a great product at the end of it. And I still loved my job because it was so fun. But monetarily, it didn't make sense after a while because of the amount of time I had to spend on it. It, it that was why I dropped it. Reading out loud is hard for a dyslexic. I mean, you guys already know that. You've seen me in my reading vlogs where I try to read the description of a book or read a note that someone's written me and it's a jumbled up mess. I can't help it. Now let's talk about some advice that I have for fellow dyslexics. Spoiler alert, it's mostly just encouragement. First piece of advice, don't compare yourself to others, including other dyslexics. I constantly get comments on my channel of people saying, I'm dyslexic too. I can barely get through a book a month. How do you read so much? Okay, so first of all, dyslexia, again, we're not a monolith, us dyslexics, and everybody's experience with dyslexia is different. If you put me on a scale from mild, moderate, severe, I end up landing somewhere between moderate and severe, or at least that's what it, they said when they diagnosed me. And, and a lot of people's dyslexia is just more severe than mine. But also you just have the reality that everybody's life experiences are different. My channel has become a part of my income and a part of my job. I still view it as a hobby because that's what's healthy for my mentality of just loving it as a hobby. But realistically, it's a part of our income now. So I can justify making it a part of my workday. I schedule, depending on how busy the rest of my workday is, depending on how much my other projects require of me, I schedule an hour to two hours a day just for physically reading a book. Then I still listen to audiobooks while I cook. Your average person can't do that realistically. I have a unique situation, very, very unique to me. And so comparing your reading quantity to my reading quantity, it's just not gonna be effective. So I say schedule time in your day to read, whatever that looks like. If it's 20 minutes before bed or 20 minutes in the morning, or if you read through your lunch break, whatever it looks like, schedule it in your day, be consistent with it, put value in your hobbies and the things that bring you rest and the things that bring you joy, and then just be happy with that. This is actually good advice for not just dyslexics, but for anybody. Comparing your reading with someone else's will never make you satisfied. Just schedule it into your day and then be proud of yourself for prioritizing something for you and don't worry about how much other people are prioritizing it. My second piece of advice is don't try to speed up your reading pace. Now, again, I grew up in a bad town. I had a terrible school system. I wasn't di diagnosed with dyslexia until I had completed high school and, okay, I was the number two biggest reader in my class. For some reason, this was a competition. We had awards for it. I read constantly, but I was a slow reader, so the other kid that read constantly always beat me out by a lot. But I loved reading, so I always came in number two. But when it came to our yearly testing or season, what was it? I, phew, I'm 28 now. It's been a minute since I've been in great school. Anyway, when it came around to testing time, I always failed reading comprehension and spelling. And I don't just mean it was the worst grade I got on my report card. I mean, I actually failed those and I, I did well enough in the other subjects that I was always able to advance, but I, I always got Ds, which isn't a fail. It's bad. I got bad grades for those two subjects that are wrapped around my favorite thing in the world. It's so demoralizing. But again, it wasn't a great school system and the teachers would always tell my parents, she'll have spell check, she'll have computers. It doesn't matter that she can't spell. It doesn't matter that her reading tests are terrible. She reads, we know she does, it's fine. So they didn't actually ever try to help me. So I never learned tools to be a more effective reader. I just read the way I read. If you're in a similar boat to me where you never got some specific help with your dyslexia, don't worry about reading faster. I have to read every single word. I can't read in chunks like so many people can for a 
long period of time. I actually made a whole video about reading faster and I talked a lot about my dyslexia in that video. And for me, these tips and tricks that I learned about reading faster are effective if I'm reading a book where the author is really repetitive um, or if, if it's a really slow part of the book, I can read a little bit faster, read in groups for a short period of time to get through the really repetitive stuff that I've already, I've already read this world building section or whatever. I can read in chunks for a short period, but I can't do it for a whole book. It isn't effective for me. My brain can't process chunks like it can for someone who doesn't have dyslexia. Don't worry about increasing your reading speed because frankly, it doesn't matter anyway. I get the feeling, like I, I relate to the feeling of, I want to read more because I love reading so much and there's so many books in the world that I wanna read, so I wanna read as much as I can. I fully understand that mentality, but in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't matter if you're a fast reader or a slow reader, your life will be the same you're still reading, which is still fantastic. The more important thing is that you're enjoying this thing than you love, than it is that you've read a certain number of books. My next piece of advice is don't worry about formatting. There are gatekeepers out there in the reading world who say listening to an audiobook doesn't count. If you listen to the audiobook, you can't say you read the book. Or even some people don't like ebooks for some reason, but they say that if you sit down and physically read a book, you've read the book. Otherwise, you don't count. Your opinions are irrelevant. Those people aren't worth listening to. If someone wants to put stipulations or boundaries or rules on their own reading, they're well within their rights to do that. If someone wants to say, audiobooks don't count as reading for me, I support them in that decision. They can do what they want with their reading. But the moment someone tries to tell you what counts as reading, someone tries to put boundaries on your reading and rules and regulation regulations on your reading, their opinion becomes irrelevant. As soon as, as, soon as somebody tells someone with a learning disability, you have to learn the same way that I do, they've lost the right to speak into your life. I got an email from a guy a little bit ago who said that he has never read a book in his life up to a recent point. He even made it all the way through college, got a degree, never read a piece of material, and it was because his dyslexia was so bad that he just couldn't do it. And the only way he got through university was he had amazing friends who helped him to understand the material without him having to read it. He stumbled on my channel, for some reason started watching it, even though it seemed irrelevant to him when he started watching. And my love for reading, despite being a dyslexic, was encouraging enough to him that he started figuring out how he could make it a part of his life too. He tried a lot of different methods. By the way, the dyslexia font that everybody says, if you're dyslexic, use the dyslexia font. It, it doesn't work for everybody. It doesn't even kind of work for me, but it does work for some dyslexics, so that's cool. But anyway, he tried a bunch of different methods and a bunch of different ways to try to make reading work for him. And the only way he found was to listen to an audiobook while reading along with the ebook. And in that method, he's able to get through one book a month. And frankly, that's the coolest thing I've ever heard. Don't let someone gatekeep you. Find the way of reading that works for you and then screw everybody else. Read your book. It's amazing that you're reading. Hey, I actually have a piece of, of advice that's, that's actually helpful and tangible. Type more. I don't know why, but typing has always been a massive part of being a better speller. And maybe it's helped with my reading. I don't actually know if that's true, but spelling, it's helped me massively. Dyslexics can't spell at all. I don't know how other dyslexics are, but for me, I've always spelled phonetically, even as an adult. I really struggle to not spell phonetically for a lot of words. Typing has always helped me. In grade school, my parents bought me this typing game. I don't really remember much about it, but I was able, I think it was elementary school actually. I, I, it was some sort of game for spelling words and typing. And that helped me tremendously when my teachers couldn't get through to me at all. And as an adult, I, I've been writing, um, you know, I enjoy writing books for fun and typing the same word wrong over and over and over again and getting that red squiggly line over and over and over again. Every time I hit that word and then they give me the correction, I look at the correction and it'll take me probably a hundred times of typing it wrong and reading the correction and seeing the distinct difference in what I'm writing and what 
it's telling me is correct, I may do that a hundred times, but eventually it'll finally connect in my brain and I'll start writing it correctly. For whatever reason, typing has been instrumental for me in learning how to spell. My last piece of advice is to just be okay with the fact that you have the most common learning disability in the world and be okay with telling people about it. I have two Discord servers that I'm super active on and my people on my Discord know I have dyslexia and they know I can't spell worth anything and sometimes I misspell a word so bad that spell check can't figure it out and I don't I don't worry about it. You know what I mean? I, if I type something wrong and spell check can't help me, then I just, I hit send. Because they know. They know I'm dyslexic. They know I can't spell. They know sometimes I scramble my words. And they've gotten really good at unscrambling my words and knowing what I mean. I mean, it's pretty impressive, actually. My Discord people know I have dyslexia and know that that means that sometimes what I write is going to be different. And they don't care. They're cool with it. They're happy to hang out with me. The thing is that there are so many kind people on this earth. So when you find one, stick with them. And when you find someone that's gonna look down on you, make fun of you, or just not make room for your learning disability, get them out of there. There are 7.5 billion people on this earth. You don't have time for people that treat you like that. Okay, that's all I have today. If you want some actual tips on how to read faster as a dyslexic, I'm gonna link Daniel's video up there and down below. His video talking about his own experience with dyslexia, um, included a lot of practical tips on how to read faster as a dyslexic because he was diagnosed early and was put in a therapy for helping him with his dyslexia so he actually have he actually has tips on how to read faster as a dyslexic if you want those instead of just some encouragement uh hop over to his video he'll help you out I personally don't worry about reading faster as a dyslexic because I enjoy reading slowly because I feel like I retain so much text, but I also know that Daniel retains a ton of what he reads too, so it obviously works. I'd love to chat with you guys more about this down in the comments. If you are dyslexic, I'd love to hear what your dyslexia looks like because it's different for everybody. Or if you just wanna chat more in general, I'd love to discuss this with you more. I post videos every Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. I'll see you guys again soon.